Um, okay, so first question, John. What led you into the music industry? Okay, what led me into the music industry? I would have to say that um, at a certain point in your life, you think about, um, boy, I, I would really like to have a date this weekend. And uh, I was uh, in my young, you know, formidable years, and I remember thinking, well, I'm horrible at sports, so I know that uh, I'm not going to be a popular kid playing football or anything like that. Um, not that smart, so I got to try something else, and then I ended up playing music. <laughs> so that's basically the impetus of, of the music thing. Was really uh, It's funny because um, a lot of people talk about having this passion for music and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I really just needed something to make myself stand out a little bit. And um, luckily for me, the music thing worked out. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. Okay, cool. So what actually inspired you to become part of the music industry more seriously? Because I remember your first release. Now, you, it also, I forgot to, I failed to mention, this is John Yamasato from the group Pure Heart as well. That, was, that group was fire back in the early 2000s. And um, I mean, I still remember hearing your first song on the radio and being like, who is this group? This is so awesome. And at the time, it was just one guitarist, one lead singer, an ukulele player, Jake Shimabukuro, and one percussionist, Cologne, um, Lopaka Cologne. So what made you folks not just become, like not settle at just jamming, but actually going into a studio and then recording an album and then releasing it? Well, I think similar to you when, when we met, um, the idea was just to play music. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I remember when when Jake, see, the, the part that people don't know is, is uh, the beginnings, right? They always kind of just see you once you've kind of hit a certain plateau of success. But we spent many years just playing uh, coffee shops and people's parties and, and whatnot. And um, I consider Jake and Lopaka to be good friends. We all got along. And so, um, I mean, if you, if you, back in the day, if you hired Pure Heart for a party, and you didn't tell us to stop, we would just play like from six o'clock and it would just keep going and going and going. We were just like nonstop, you know, and we, we used to, they used to come to my house on the weekends and we'd have like six hour practices and just be in the back room and that's all we wanted to do, you know? So, um, I, I forgot the question. What was the question again? <laughs> oh yeah, so what led us into the studio? Yeah, so it's one of those things that after a while, um, yeah, you play, you play around enough gigs and you see uh, your, your contemporaries going out there and, and creating an album. And back in the day, there was there were no was no internet, so the really the way that you would reach people is through a recording and the radio. And so, um, yeah, it was one of those things. Just to say, okay, how do we now get on the radio? And just kept working toward it and asking people and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, we just wanted to be like everybody else. And and um, back in our day, it was uh, the Al Creator Boys were the big thing, and, and we wanted to be like them, and um, so they were on the radio. We wanted to be on the radio. It's just kind of like going, following in the footsteps of your forefathers, I guess you could say, in a way. And then I also remember your mom helping Kiahivai. She was our first manager, actually. You know, she really kind of helped us see how important that was to have a manager and have somebody to, to do correspondence and get back to inquiries. And so how instrumental was your mom as your manager for the group? Because, I mean, you, just, you don't get there and you don't win and you don't have the type of success that you folks have experienced without someone really organizing different steps throughout your career. Yeah, I think that's a big part. Um, most musicians, I mean, even to this day, w when I work with them through high sessions or, or some other platforms, to, to, I don't know, get organized, come up with a plan, execute the plan, that's, that's a lot of the piece of getting your music out there, right? And, but musicians tend to think, oh, I just want to do my music. And so if you're not the type of person that can think in, a, in an organized way and you are an, a typical artist, um, having someone else there to kind of move you in that direction is, is very helpful. I mean, even, even when you think of Jake, I mean, he, he's, he's an artist type mentality. I mean, he's a super talented guy. 
I don't think he sits down at night and thinks about, oh, how am I going to organize my day next tomorrow? He just kind of goes with the flow kind of thing. But he has people that help him with that. And um, yeah, my mom is, is <laughs> she's pretty, pretty uh, on top of things. So it was kind of nice that she was, and, and you know, we were so young at the time, I think she just didn't want us to get taken advantage of. You hear all these stories about the music industry and how it can be. Um, here in Hawaii, everyone's pretty supportive. I don't feel like there's too many uh, nefarious people out there. But, uh, but there are, so you, know, you want to be careful. I'll tell you a funny story about Mai, if you want to hear it. Yeah. So I remember when we first started Kalahivai, Mai, when I met her, was this uh, very tomboy uh, surfer chick, <laughs> would ride her skateboard around UH and play her ukulele, and we said, okay, Mai, we need to get you kind of like, you know, we're going to take this pic photo shoot, and so we're going to put some, you know, makeup on and, you know, get your hair done and stuff. Oh, she was not about that. <laughs> she was not about getting dressed up, man. It was, it was like, man, pulling teeth to get her to get all pretty and stuff. And then now it's like, oh, my God, she's like, this fabulous, you know? Like, and so it's, re it's pretty neat to see the, the transformation. You look beautiful, by the way. Thank you so much. So, so, oh, thank you very much. But it was so funny because, uh, yeah, in the beginning, was that was one of the things, right? You want to put forth some kind of persona, and um, uh, the girls were just not having it back then. I don't know if Lei Le would do it now either. You know, she's still pretty tomboyish, but uh, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Oh, I know. <laughs> Look at me now. I got eyelashes on. <laughs> Who was this girl back in the day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, throughout your career, you have pivoted quite a bit. Uh -huh. And honestly, I love it because um, I kind of feel like we're living in a time where doing one thing is just not going to be able to cut it. And so what, what, how did you find other interests outside of music? Okay, well, um, I, I mean, I, everything I do kind of runs back toward music. Um, we, we, you know, I, I kind of said when I started that it wasn't a passion of mine, but a, as you get into it, I mean, it, it did become something that I, I just truly love to do and whatnot. But I don't know, everyone's different. I mean, there's people who are, are really superstar talents and um, that's what they should be focusing on is being the, the center of attention. I, I never felt like that was my place. I was telling everybody I was probably the least talented of the three of us, I mean, as far as musicianship goes. But, um, but I like, uh, I, I'm kind of going off the, the tangent of the question, but um, I, I like being a part of the music business. And um, so I was trying to find my little niche, you know? The, the thing about, the hard part about being the center of attention and the star and stuff is that you have to perform all the time. And uh, after the Pure Heart experience, I felt like that was kind of not my place. I, I didn't like the, the constant, uh, spotlight kind of thing. So I, f I always kind of wanted to be kind of like a side person because I could still enjoy the fruits of the success, like with Kaahivai, when the, the CDs do well and stuff like that. It's like, wow, that was, that was exciting. But then I don't have to be the face and be out there. In fact, even now, um, I'm trying to take like really small gigs so that the pressure is kind of less. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, when you take gigs, the one thing, if you're a singer, I've had it in the past like pretty significant shows and then you get sick like a few days before and you can't sing and you're like, oh my God, what the heck am I going to do? And it, like, my life is so chaotic, I, can't <laughs> I need to add like more chaos to it, you know, at this point. Yeah. Hi Sessions. Uh -huh. Such a cool production. Thanks. And it's going on how many years now? We've done seven years. Seven. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, what? led you to that because I, I liked how you you answered me by saying everything that you've done even though you've pivoted has always ran back to music mm -hmm. so how did you create this idea of having such a great production show that really not only promotes Hawaii talent and artists but honors us as, at the same time well thanks uh, yeah I enjoyed doing the show um, really the, the show was okay so um, when I had my daughter that was 10 years ago I remember uh, she was you know, you try to keep kid, little kids busy, and, and it's really tough to keep them, you know. But the one thing she did like to do is she liked to watch uh, videos on YouTube, and she liked Twi Taylor Swift, so we'd watch all these Taylor Swift videos, you know. And so that's what made me come up with this idea, because I started, I saw the videos on, on 
on YouTube, and then I started looking for like Kaylee Reichel or Makaha Sons, and no one really had good product produced videos, you know. And I thought, wow, you know, even the the stars of the Hawaiian music scene don't have these like really nice produced videos. So um, called my friend Dave, and he was just getting into video at the time. So he was always an internet guy, and then he's but he was transitioning into video production. So I said, hey, you know, this could be a kind of a fun side project and you can practice your videography with it and stuff like that so got him on board and then uh, I always knew sound guys because of the recording studio that we used to have so put it all together but really the idea was um, my my personal mission I had two, two missions with this show one was to promote artists in a, in a way that they couldn't do on their own because now we have this group of people who are willing to do it and then the second was um, just to socialize with friends of mine who um, I would otherwise not see. You know, I'm an only child, so really my friends are my family because I don't have, you know, when I was little, I didn't have anyone to play with, so I had to, you know, make friends and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I, f I, I was thinking about, um, in my other work, in my real estate, a lot of people play golf. Like, that's their thing. Once a month, they go and they play the golf for once a week or whatever. So I figured, well, instead of playing, I hate golf. <laughs> Since <laughs> we're at a golf course, it's funny. But um, instead of playing golf, I would do this project. And so once a month, we get everybody together, we shoot these videos, and it's just like I played golf, but there's a project and there's a result at the end. So that's the whole impetus of the show. It's not, not super complicated. It got complicated when you know, TV got involved and all that stuff, but... The impetus and the original idea was simple. Awesome. And thanks so much, John. A couple more and I'll cut you loose. Um, you're also a father, married, you've got a couple kids, wife, Maui girl. Yep. Um, how do you balance everything? Okay, that's a good question. The answer is um, I, I don't balance everything. You know, there are times where you're very focused on certain things because it needs a lot of attention and then you turn your focus to other things and kind of you try to balance but there's never there's never you know everyone who says like uh, oh, oh how do you balance it there's never balance I mean um, every, something's going to have to be put to the wayside but the, the thing is like you know if, if you put your time and effort into things, um, you get them kind of momentum moving, then they kind of go and then you can kind of put, move over here and push this rock and, and go. Um, I have been cutting back a lot on, on certain things to focus more on family, but um, the other thing is I don't watch TV. Like, well, I watch movies, so the, the, I feel like so many people waste a ton of time during the day, you know, like um, my, you know, if you're watching three or four hours of TV a day, that's time you could be picking up a skill or learning something or getting something done, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, I'll pop in a movie maybe once a week or something like that. But, And then um, just trying to utilize your time a little better. Like, I do, um, um, there's, a, there's a philosophy that my, uh, my old boss used to tell me, which is called slow is fast, meaning that if you prepare and you have things organized, it may seem like you're taking a lot of time to get things ready, but then when the actual event comes or the thing you need to do comes, it'll flow faster. And so like, um, you know, at night I get ready for the next day and I put everybody that I need to call on a list. And so as I'm driving, I make all my phone calls because otherwise I'm just sitting there like doing nothing. I mean, I could be listening to music and stuff like that, but try to get all that stuff done because it has to get done, right? But if I get it done in the car, it saves me extra money. It's kind of like time management and stuff, but um, yeah, I would say that time management and there is no balance. I mean, when I started uh, on the real estate side, I used to work like a crazy person till like two in the morning, wake up at seven, work all day, you know, kind of stuff. But, but again, once you get that momentum going, the thing starts taking itself, you can kind of pull back on that and focus your attention on something else. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, John. I really appreciate you being here. And... My last question is, uh, what's the future of John Yamasato? Uh, I have no idea. I've, I, I mean, well, because High Sessions, uh, just to, you know, we're taking a, a short little break now. We had an issue with YouTube last year where they changed their monetary policy. I think after seven years, people are getting a little 
burnt out on stuff, so we're kind of pulling back a little bit. We may do special projects, so I don't know where that's going. Um, but I, I don't know. It's one of these things. I, I think everybody in this room, you know, you, if you just keep in mind, like, as you're going along in life, who you're talking to, what opportunities are presented to you, there's always something. And if you, um, if you ask people and you put it together, there's so many things that you can do, you know? And that's how all my, pro I mean, my Kiahi vibe was just, hey, I know these girls from UH, they're cool, I wanna play music with them, it's fun, and you know, it turns into something, right? Oh, uh, I wanna start a show, I got my friends that can do this, it's fun, but you just move it along, it turns into something. So, you know, as you bump into people along the way, just kind of keep in the back of your, of your mind. I tell my, my kids all the time, like, you gotta be nice to your friend, I mean, the people at school or the people you meet, because you never know, like, years down the road, you're, you're into something, and then you think, oh yeah, I remember this guy used to do that, or, and you can call him and say, like, hey, Vance, remember, Back in the day when you when we used to you know hang out here, I remember you used to do this and whatever profession it is, you know, and yeah, you just build your your database of, of good people, you know, and you can kind of do anything. John, <laughs> I would have for John Yamasato. <laughs> <laughs>